Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Down your row and tell somebody you keep fighting. Maybe a tough fight. Let's just be 50 people that believe it's already a fixed fight. No matter how hard you fight, you still gonna win this. Let me find somebody that's got the Holy Ghost for real. Let me find somebody that's saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You may be in a fight right now, but the thing is, you ain't going down without a fight. You can back me in the corner, but I'm coming out swinging. I got my sword in my hand. Phenomenal choir that sung us. 
try my best not to be long, but I will be strong. Yeah. If you can, please stand for the reading of God's word. First Corinthians, First Corinthians, the third chapter. First Corinthians, the third chapter. Musicians in about twenty minutes. I'm gonna need to hear C sharp in my ear. First Corinthians, the third chapter. I'm gonna read a few verses when you hear it. I'm gonna begin reading at verse nine. When you have a shot, I got it. And the reason is thus, for we are God's co-workers. You are God's field and God's building. According to God's grace that was given to me, I have laid a foundation as a skilled master builder. And another builds on it. But each one must be careful how he builds on it. For no one can lay any other foundation than that which has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on that foundation with gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become obvious. For the day will disclose it because it will be revealed. Your Bible may say tried by fire. The key verse says the fire will test the quality of each man's work. We can be seated in the presence of God. Spirit of the living God, thank you for this opportunity. Now, Father, bless this food that we're about to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you do me a favor and echo the sentiments of our subject this afternoon? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. I'm just built different. I'm just They don't say nothing to you. They don't talk to them no more. whole service. I just look at somebody behind you and say, news flash. I'm just built different. That's why you probably don't understand me or can't stand me is because I'm not built like you. I thank God for versatility. I'm so glad that everybody in here don't look the same, don't sound the same, don't think the same, because the world would be in trouble if we had a bunch of yous running around here. Oh God, give me a yes God church this afternoon. And so versatility has caused us to walk into a place where we can see God in a way that we've never seen him throughout the generations. I'm so grateful that we have in this ministry, in this house tonight, so many young people because young people are to help push the vision of the elderly. And without no young people, there is no mobility because soon people die out. But the young people keep birthing young people. And so I want to share something with you tonight that is going to change your mind about how you see yourself, about how God sees you, where you at in life, where you are, where you're going, what you plan on doing, and everything else in between. I didn't come to preach to the young people, I came to preach to the hungry people. So when that comes to marketing and advertising, they teach you, because I'm a communications major, that it's always good to have a good tagline or a good slogan. They, need, they say that you need to have something that will stick with people so that they can remember you. You've got to have something that will stick to the people that you are attempting to provide a service to or a service for. Without a good slogan, you become unattractive and ultimately undesirable. And thus it is that throughout history, in the historicity of vehicles it is, that we have come to know a slogan that holds much weight and history in vehicles. They represent decades of hard work, consistent determination to be the best, and some would even say that this vehicle represents the American spirit. When it comes to trucks and strong vehicles, we all in the sanctuary are familiar with the term built for tough. And as the nation's leading selling vehicle, the slogan it's not full of fluff, Elder Jalen, but it is one that promotes truth and integrity in its product. By pushing market and delivering the leading standard, Ford has always helped throughout the years propel trucks and automobiles forward. Whether it is developing integrated luxury features into the modern truck or through persistently pushing the envelope for fuel economy on performance engines, Ford has never strayed from their primary goal. The primary goal is this, to be America's favorite truck 
and car manufacturer. After reading this, considering this, ladies and gentlemen, I want to submit the question this afternoon as I move swiftly that if the world, if Ford has enough sense to work tirelessly to focus on their primary goal, why is it that the church looks like they're about to lose their mind? If the world understands their calling and if the world has enough sense to know that our job is to build a vehicle that will not fail, why is it that the church has a problem trusting a God that can do anything but fail? If in fact the world understands that God is for everybody and that God is love, why is there so much hatred and unforgiveness in the church? If the world understands that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, how is it that the church loses their mind when you start going through a little test of trials? If the world has enough grit to keep going in the face of defeat, why is it that you're so ready to throw in the towel because you got a couple of no's? Because somebody broke your heart. Because nobody wants to be your friend anymore. Look at y'all looking at me how you looking. Don't you get mad when somebody deletes you as a friend on Facebook. Let them not text you back and leave you on red. Let them not come and come to your birthday party. Let them stop asking you to make the cakes for the church convention. And you get all in your feelings because the church has a problem with losing the focus of what we were created for. So I want to preach to some people in here that may be about 10 to 15 of you that says, Preacher, I got to be honest. I've gone through some things. I've made some mistakes. And the devil tried his best. But one thing's for certain, two things for sure. I will not lose my focus in this season. I'm going to graduate. I'm going to get better grades than I did last year. I'm working to make sure that when I retire, I have something to sit on. I'm working to make sure that when God sent me my husband,
is unprecedented. My foundation is uncompromised. My foundation is never outdone. My foundation is strong and it's built to last. And I don't know why nobody's not saying amen because if that's your foundation too, you at least ought to be able to testify. Oh God, let me find somebody here that's going to tell the truth. You, you at least ought to be able to say, I, I thought that at one point God had forgotten about me, but it was that he never forgotten about me. He was just waiting on me to stop complaining and start praising. Stop worrying them grandkids. When God ready to get ready to save them, 
favor. Stop worrying your children about coming to church. They're going to come eventually. They're waiting to see how consistent you're going to be. Y'all quiet. They're waiting to see if the church is going to be able to accept them. That not that everybody knows my business. Now, now that everybody knows that I'll slip with everybody around town. Can I trust that y'all will cover me and won't judge me? Can I trust that you saw me in the club last night? But you won't look at me crazy when I come and say I was glad when they said up to me.
stability. He gives you stability. He gives you stability and security. Watch this. The last thing he says is, you are God's building. Not only does he give you stability and security, not only does he give you open doors, but he lets you know that you ain't never got to worry about putting yourself back together. Because God knows how to do a lot with broken pieces. I'm going to say that again, I'm going to give you scripture. I say God knows how to do a lot with broken pieces. You sit here disqualifying yourself because you think you're broken. But let me tell you how much God can do with a broken piece. Jesus said, what do you have? They said, we got two fishes and five.
natural. I said it was normal. I said it was time for the bush to be burned. But the thing is, the bush was burning, sister, but it wasn't consumed. And that's all I gotta tell you. And God told me to tell you, you're not like Moses, but you're like that bush.
see who's going to praise God off of this. Somebody went through the same thing you went through. They died in it, but you made it. Church folk will kill you. 